Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Three Laps, Three Topics. We're going to get into things straight away because we've got a lot to talk about today. I'm going to kick off with standing restarts. So if you haven't heard, if you've been living under a rock for the last fortnight, F1 have made a few rules changes that will come into effect in 2015. The worst one of them all, without a doubt, being the standing restarts after safety car periods. Um, I'm pretty much with the majority that I don't like this rule change whatsoever I think it's totally unnecessary and I saw an article uh, with Charlie Whiting being quoted today that I just wanted to pick up a few points that that for me sh- truly show that this has not been thought through properly that it's been done on a whim it's a knee jerk reaction and it's totally unnecessary first thing that I want to pick up on is this quote here so of course, you are more likely statistically to have incidents at a standing start than, than any other time in the race, but no driver wants that to happen and no driver will cause it to happen. Particularly that last bit, no driver will cause it to happen. With, with the majority of the drivers, I won't say all, because I, I think we all know the particular drivers who um, are a bit more gung ho than others. But no driver going to the first corner of a first lap wants to cause an incident and and um, wants to cause an incident and a crash and put himself out of the race. But inevitably, it does happen. A driver will cause it to happen, not deliberately, but it will happen. So why are we dismissing the chance of a crash happening? on a safety car standing restart 20, 30, 40 laps into a race as opposed to on lap 1 I just think that is a totally ridiculous comment and then to add it add it on with I don't know if there is any risk personally it's like you've just said it more likely statistically to have incidents at a standing start and it's it's a comment that really really wound me up Um, his comments on uh, tyres I think have got good grounding so yeah we see at the moment with a rolling restart pretty much everyone will have pitted have got new tyres so so I can I can uh, see where he's coming from on that concern um, and the fairness for the leader I just, once again is just like totally not looking through the full situation so Two, two things drivers were concerned about one was fairness fairness being a leader is more likely to lose his lead after a standing start than he is from a rolling start it's like once again you've just said it it's it's statistically been shown over the years that the guy from second place is more likely to be get, able to be in the lead out of turn one than he is on a on a rolling restart the other thing that I really can't get my head around with the safety car rules and how they're being changed is that the current worst bit of them as we as we currently stand with them in in this season is not being changed for me drivers being able to recover a lap when they're a lap down is totally unnecessary loses his racing laps and doesn't add anything to the race whatsoever it, especially the losing um racing laps so if you follow me for a while you might remember that exactly this time a year ago i complained about this when we lost about two or three laps at Silverstone last year because we needed to get some Caterhams and Marushes back on the lead lap. And for me, that was what lost Weber the race last year. He, he had a lot more pace than Rosberg and probably needed two more laps to get by, but he couldn't do so. Very quickly on lap two, I just wanted to cover the Caterham sale from Tony Fernandez to the Middle East Consortium. In the short term, yes, it's good. It keeps Caterham on the grid, as I think there was actually some concern that they might not see the season out. In the long term, though, I'm really worried for Caterham. Um, Colin Coles doesn't have a good track record. He's already driven two F1 projects into the ground with Spiker and HRT. His work on the Lotus Codua LMP1 programme in the last couple of years I'm sorry to say it has been awful an absolute joke and thank goodness the rest of LMP1's been so good because that project has been an absolute farce all the way through and I still don't think that Lotus will run at all this season and I do worry for for Caterham going forward as to where where they will be in three to five years time but yeah personally I don't see them being on the grid 
uh, three years from now if, if Coles is still in charge and that's a real shame because I know a lot of the guys and girls down, down at Leafield have put a lot of time and effort into getting catering to where they are today Lastly, on a more cheerier note, I want to talk about a bit of Formula E news. So, testing has begun. They've had a big swanky launch event down in London in this last week. And a few more drivers have been announced as taking part in the championship. Uh, first of all, I'm really glad to see Catherine Legg get a drive uh, with the uh, Aguri team. Uh, she's going to be joined by Antonio Felix da Costa, which I think is a really good move for him. Uh, if you remember back a few weeks ago I went through all the drivers in the drivers club who I thought would be good for the championship and quite pleasantly surprised to see that Stefan Sarazan has signed up with Venturi Grand Prix now I thought back then that that would be a real coup for the championship if they could get Stefan Sarazan as he's done some really great work on the Toyota program so to see him join up is really good Nick Heidfeld's joined up as well he's confirmed it's in uh, Venturi Grand Prix as well and yeah I'm really looking forward to Formula E I'm probably going to do doing some more videos on it as we get close to the championship the championship starts in September but great news from Formula E coming out this week so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button in the top right hand corner. I've been Andrew the Blade and I'll catch you very soon.